Throughout history, the field of medicine has witnessed a spectrum of practices that in today's light appear not only astonishing, but often downright outrageous. Join Facts First as we present outrageous medical treatments from history that were once the norm. Bloodletting Bloodletting, a practice that spanned centuries, was rooted in the ancient belief of balancing the body's humors. Physicians would intentionally withdraw blood from patients using various methods, including leeches or lancets, to treat a wide range of ailments, from fevers to infections. The underlying theory was that imbalances in bodily fluids caused disease, and by removing blood, the equilibrium would be restored. This practice persisted into the 19th century and was employed by prominent figures like George Washington's doctors during his final illness. However, it's widely condemned due to the recognition that it was not only ineffective but also harmful. Trepanation Trepanation, also known as trephination or trepanning, was a surgical procedure involving the drilling or cutting of a hole into the skull. The practice dates back thousands of years and was conducted for various reasons, including head injuries, migraines, or even to treat mental illnesses. The rationale behind trepanation varied from releasing perceived evil spirits to relieving pressures on the brain. In many cases, trepanation was carried out with crude instruments and without anesthesia, leading to severe pain and suffering for the patients. It's now considered a barbaric and unnecessary practice with modern medicine offering safer and more effective treatments for head injuries and mental health conditions. Mercury as a cure-all Mercury, a toxic heavy metal, was once believed to possess miraculous healing properties and was administered as a cure-all remedy for a multitude of ailments, including syphilis. The use of mercury in medicine dates back centuries, with physicians prescribing it in various forms such as mercurial ointments and pills. Tragically, patients who underwent mercury treatments experienced severe and often irreversible health consequences as mercury poisoning causes damage to the nervous system and vital organs. The abandonment of mercury-based treatments marked a significant milestone in the history of medical ethics and recognition of the harmful effects of toxic substances. Malaria Therapy in the early 20th century, malaria therapy was employed as a radical and experimental treatment for tertiary syphilis. Patients suffering from syphilis were intentionally infected with malaria parasites, leading to high fever spikes, which were believed to kill the syphilis bacteria. Afterward, the patients would undergo treatment to cure the malaria. While this method sometimes appeared to work, it was an extremely risky and dangerous approach. With the discovery of more effective and less hazardous treatments for syphilis, malaria therapy was rightfully abandoned. Lobotomies Lobotomies, or prefrontal lobotomies, were a psychiatric procedure developed in the early 20th century. The procedure involved the surgical removal or disconnection of the prefrontal cortex from the rest of the brain. It was initially used to treat various mental illnesses, including schizophrenia and depression. However, lobotomies often resulted in severe cognitive and emotional impairment, effectively turning patients into docile and apathetic individuals. The widespread use of lobotomies, particularly in the mid-20th century, raised ethical questions and it was eventually phased out in favor of more humane and effective treatments, like psychotherapy and psychotropic medications. Electroconvulsive therapy, ECT, without anesthesia. Electroconvulsive therapy was initially introduced without the use of anesthesia. Patients undergoing ECT experienced the application of electric shocks directly to their temples, resulting in violent seizures. The practice was extremely painful and traumatic, and it often led to severe injuries. It was believed that inducing seizures could alleviate symptoms of severe mental illnesses. Fortunately, modern ECT is administered with anesthesia and muscle relaxants to ensure patient comfort and safety. Radithor Radioactive Water Radithor, a radioactive water product, gained popularity in the early 20th century and was marketed as a health tonic with alleged curative properties. It contained radium and thorium, both highly radioactive elements. People consumed radithor in the belief that it could boost their vitality and overall health. 
However, the radioactive nature of the product caused severe radiation poisoning to those who ingested it. Several cases of illness and death were linked to Radithor consumption, leading to its withdrawal from the market. Heroin as a Cough Suppressant In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, heroin was marketed and sold as an over-the-counter remedy for coughs and respiratory ailments. Its effectiveness in suppressing coughs was undeniable, but the addictive properties of heroin led to widespread abuse and addiction. As the opioid crisis escalated, the dangers of heroin became evident, and it was eventually banned for medical use in most countries. Smoking as a respiratory treatment In a paradoxical practice, smoking was recommended as a treatment for asthma and other respiratory conditions during the 19th and early 20th centuries. Patients were encouraged to inhale smoke from various substances, such as stramonium, a plant in the nightshade family. However, this practice had a detrimental impact on patients' health, exacerbating their respiratory problems and causing lung damage. Medical Cannibalism In the 17th and 18th centuries, corpse medicine was a practice that involved using human body parts, blood, and tissues for medicinal purposes. It was believed consuming or applying these materials could cure various ailments. For example, human skulls were ground into powders and human fat was used in salves. This practice was rooted in superstition and eventually abandoned as scientific understanding advanced and ethical concerns arose. Tobacco Smoke Enemas Tobacco smoke enemas were a peculiar medical practice from the 18th century. It involved inserting a tube into a patient's rectum and blowing tobacco smoke into it. It was believed that the tobacco smoke would stimulate respiration and revive drowning victims. While there might have been instances where the practice seemed to work, it was fundamentally flawed and hazardous. The introduction of smoke into the rectum had limited therapeutic value and posed significant risks, including burns and infections. Electric Belts and Corsets in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, a wave of electric devices, including belts and corsets, flooded the market, promising miraculous health benefits. These devices were equipped with batteries that delivered mild electric shocks to the wearer, claiming to rejuvenate and restore vitality. While they gained popularity due to their innovative nature, there was a lack of scientific evidence to support their efficacy. Moreover, the shocks delivered were typically weak and had little to no therapeutic value. As the medical community began to scrutinize these devices, they were gradually recognized as pseudoscientific and fraudulent. Tapeworm Diet In the early 20th century, a peculiar and dangerous diet fad emerged, the tapeworm diet. People seeking rapid weight loss would intentionally ingest tapeworm larvae, which would then grow in their intestines. The rationale was that the tapeworms would consume some of the calories from the host's food resulting in weight loss. But this practice was fraught with danger. It not only led to weight loss, but also caused malnutrition, abdominal pain, and a host of other health issues. Now it's time to hear from you. Which one of these is the most surprising to hear about? Let us know in the comments section below.